Hi, I'm Random Tuesday, and in this video I'm going to walk you through my Zagreus cosplay from the game Hades. I'm going to go over the various parts and pieces of this cosplay, talk a little bit about the process of how I made them, some of the choices and decisions that I made, as well as show you how like these parts go together and the whole thing like gets on and stays on your body. If you're looking for a pattern for this cosplay or many of the other cosplays that I've made, you can find that information in the links down below over on my website, randomtuesday.com. You can also find there pictures and other tutorials and resources of many of the cosplays that I have made. So with that, let's get started. For the leggings, I used a really basic legging pattern. For my actual pattern, I ended up with one that has a side seam in it, but I would recommend, and the way that I drafted the pattern that you can find in the links down below, is without the side seam. Um, I think that just makes for an overall cleaner look, but obviously slightly harder to get a super tight fit. Otherwise, the leggings are just a very simple elastic waist to make them really easy to get on and off and nice and comfortable to wear. For the material, I went with a four-way stretch spandex uh, that I purchased from Blue Moon Fabrics. You can find more information about that in the links below. I went for an intentionally darker red color because I knew that I was going to be making the sash and the leggings out of two different materials. So rather than trying to perfectly match them, I went for two intentionally different colors. So the sash I wanted to be that really bright, striking red color, and therefore for the leggings I went with a darker, more maroony, deeper red. For the tunic I used a matte satin as the base fabric in kind of a charcoal, gunmetal-y gray color. It's not technically black, basically looks like black, but I wanted it to kind of offset or reflect the light a little bit more, which you can get out of a not true black color. And then for the trim, I just used a plain white satin fabric. For the sash, I used a red crepe satin because I wanted it to be matte on both sides and also just really light and really drapey, which is something that you get out of crepe fabric. The basic shape of the tunic is essentially like a slightly skewed rectangle with a bit of an extra chunk cut out of one side to allow for the body to sit through. Um, and that also gives it that sort of unequal asymmetrical hem uh, that you can see where one side's slightly longer than the other. The sash itself is a very long strip of fabric. It's about 75 inches long. So I ended up having to seam it in order for it to go all the way around. And I'm hiding that seam right underneath the belt here in the front. And then also hiding that seam underneath the belt in the back uh, where the, the butt flap comes in and connects because I wanted this to just be consistent. So it is tacked in place along the edge of that big loop, essentially making like a, like a donut with an extra little a little flappy. I then fixed the sash in place both at the shoulder seam and at the waist to really keep it secure and completely connected to the tunic, adding a few extra pleats on both sides of the tunic to help it kind of hold that drape and scrunched shape together. For the bone delir, as I like to call it, I made each of these in as an individual section out of two millimeter EVA foam that I pinched slightly down the center and used a little line of hot glue to hold that kind of a ridge shape and give it that spine-like look. I then covered each of those pieces in a matte white pleather spandex, uh, kind of stretching it over slightly to make it nice and smooth and wrapping the edges uh, to give it a really clean edge before airbrushing these kind of darker shadings along the bottom edge and the sides to really give it that extra dimension and, and pizzazz. I then glued each of these individual pieces, just overlapping them ever so slightly around the edge uh, using contact cement. You'll also see here, uh, there's a little bit of twill tape. I had a two inch strip of twill tape sewn all the way around that sort of torso opening of the tunic to help stabilize that seam um, because otherwise it really would have just been a raw surged edge. The Very Good Borco Pauldron uh, was made out of a base of EVA foam and covered in warbla. To get the shape of the skulls, I used Kamui Cosplay's uh, wolf skull pattern. I printed it at about 75%. I then simplified the pattern a little bit before gluing it together. Um, because I was going to stabilize with Warbla, I only used two millimeter EVA foam, mostly because it saved me a little bit of trouble and a little bit of bulk. Um, and then I covered all of them with Warbla to make them real sturdy. Uh, but that also translates to them being kind of heavy. So rather than relying on this very flimsy, drapey <laughs> uh, tunic to hold them up, I created some understrapping in order to keep this whole pauldron in place. So. 
The strapping basically follows the line that is on the tunic and then sits right under the bust. So to get the pauldron on, I slip the, the chest loop on over the head. It does technically come apart if you need it to, but I find it easier not to. And then there is a buckle on this uh, torso strap that can be tightened. So we can see this straight line here and here follows the line of the tunic. This can be tightened here as well if it starts slipping down. This is kind of the big thing that's gonna stop it from just straight up falling off the shoulder. Then the tunic slips kind of underneath and there are a few pieces of Velcro along the edge of the tunic. So I've got a piece of Velcro right here uh, and that connects to right underneath, right here on the strap. And then in the back, we've got another couple of pieces of Velcro and those go along the strap as well. And then this sort of three piece overlay that sort of helps it all blend together. Velcro is right in place over here. Other than a little bit right here at the chest, which you could shift slightly further down if you wanted more of a waistband to hide it. But because I knew uh, my partner was gonna be wearing a shirt underneath, I wasn't su super worried about the strap. Basically all of the rest of the harness is hidden directly under the tunic and adds just a lot of structure to hold up the weight of these very good boys. For the belt, I made the decorative section out of a combination of EVA foam and warbler. So this back section to keep it flexy and uh, more comfortable, I made this part out of two various layers of two millimeter EVA foam, similar to how I did the boondelier. Uh, covered in that white pleather spandex. And then each of the skull pieces was made out of layers of EVA foam covered in that warbla to kind of give them that extra shape and stability before gluing them directly on and using paint to kind of blend all of these pieces together to look like they're sort of one unit. The actual strap for the belt itself is made out of that same pleather that I'm covering the material in just to give it a little bit of stretch uh, and help it kind of sit snugly around the waist. And it just sticks together with a bunch of Velcro that is uh, sewn to some felt that is glued to the back of this belt section. So it just goes around the front and then Velcro's in place here. And once it's in place, it hides the seams on the sash in both the front and the back. I made all three of the gold armbands in a similar way. They are a, a loop of gold spandex and a layer of just black spandex to kind of add a little bit more thickness and stability to them. The edges were then folded over and top stitched. For the designs, I just drew them directly onto the spandex using a very fine black Sharpie and then kind of blended and smudged them in using some of the plaid FX paints before airbrushing the edges to both give some dimension and hide the uh, stitching lines and make it blend in a little bit more. For the red armband, I wanted to help keep this uh, X shape and back of the hand design really stable. Um, but because it's just like really strappy and stringy, if I just did them as wrapped things, they were gonna like shift and move apart all the time. So I cheated a little bit and made a glove using a uh, power mesh that matches my partner's uh, skin tone relatively well. And then I just made like a little armband glove that I top stitched all of these red strips to directly and a little hand glove that I then also top stitched before sewing the two pieces together. And it just slips on and holds all of the designs in place pretty well and really kind of makes it from a distance and in pictures look relatively realistic. For the laurel, I made a wire band um, large enough to fit on my partner's head and then wrapped it in some EVA foam, both for some padding, but also to help it stay a little bit snugger on her head. And then I just used a bunch of uh, autumnal colored or red, orange, and yellow colored leaves that you could easily replicate something similar out of foam or even just fabric on your own and decorate them. And then it just sits and uh, stays in place by being snug uh, and by bending the wire in if it ever starts getting a little bit looser. For the feetsies, I took a, I purchased a pair of yellow toe socks and then I used the Plaid FX paint uh, mixed with a little airbrush thinner and airbrushed all of this red color onto them. And then I uh, just stuck on some yellow uh, or some fake nails that I painted yellow to make them look a little bit more uh, like feet and a little less like socks when she is wearing them. For the greaves and for the sword, I have two separate videos, one on each of them. So if you're looking for information on either of these parts, go check out those videos. They'll be somewhere on the, I 
I think it's over. I'm going to get it wrong every time, but I'm pretty sure it's over there. If not, you can check out the links to those videos down in the description below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you found this helpful. Let me know down in the comments below what questions you still have about this cosplay or other cosplays or whatever else you want to put in some YouTube comments. And of course, don't forget to do that like and subscribe YouTube goodness. If you're looking for the pattern for this cosplay, information uh, and more information about this one is down in the links in the description below or you can head over to my website, randomtuesday.com. Lastly, but never leastly, thank you to each and every one of my patrons over on Patreon who made this video and this cosplay, which has been a mammoth quest, a reality. If you're able to do so, any monthly amount or a one-off tip over on Ko-fi is truly appreciated. Thank you so much for watching.